everyone, it's Gina with Purdue Extension of Floyd County, and we've been doing these YouTube uh, videos monthly, and I thought for the next couple of months, I would kind of break down what kinds of questions that I get so you know kind of what I do and what you can ask of me and kind of what my my strengths are. Um, so usually the first question I get is, um, I always define my, my title as ANR, Extension Educator, and a lot of people don't know what that means. And it is the short way to say agriculture, natural resources, extension educator. Um, so we shorten it down because that really doesn't fit on a business card very well. Um, I also serve a second role in the county as community development extension educator. But I feel the most questions and stuff for agriculture, natural resources. So I really can try to help answer any questions related to agriculture, natural resources. So here's a few of our, our simple examples would be insects. Um, Sometimes I can do it pretty quickly and I can tell you exactly what it is and how to treat for it if it needs to be treated for. Um, other times it takes me a couple of days to do some research. So the first one would be uh, the brown marmorated stink bug. We get it um, and it's not native to Indiana. It's not native to the US. So uh, it, it is a problem. It eats on vegetables. It comes in our houses in the fall and the winter. And it can be in different stages when we see it growing in the spring, late spring, early summer. Um, so here's two photos of what it looks like. The one that is that brightly colored kind of yellow or orange is a, one of the instars of it. So it's a juvenile stage of the adult. The adult is the darker brown and it has white bands on its antenna. This would be one like we see it in our house and stuff. Just suck it up with a vacuum cleaner um, if it's outside be looking for those white bands on the antenna because we do have native stink bugs. So we wanna make sure that if we're trying to target the stink bug because they're eating our vegetable crops like tomatoes that we can um, grab the right, the right one and, and make sure that we're eradicating the correct insect. The next one is a squash bug. Um, this photo actually has many different ages in it because the squash bug goes through instars. So what it looks like as a baby, pretty much looks like the same as an adult. Um, and these can, you'll see them on the back of like squash leaves and stuff. And they're like little gold eggs. There's clusters of them. It can be pretty difficult sometimes to get rid of. Um, if you see just the egg masses before they hatch, you could just cut off that leaf and dispose of that leaf. Uh, another insect that we get lots of questions about as educators are tomato hornworms. So in this photo, uh, this hornworm has white egg sacs on it. At this point, I'm not concerned about any damage it might cause by eating on the leaves of the tomatoes because those white egg sacs contain, or they did contain, depending on what stage they're at, um, parasitic wasp. And those parasitic wasps feed on the hornworm and cause it to die. So it's a natural check to keep the hornworms in balance. And a lot of people don't like the hornworms. And I totally appreciate that because they can just devastate tomato plants. They do turn into moths. So this is an insect that in its younger life cycle uh, is not friendly in our landscape because it does um, eat on the tomatoes and some other plants and really causes a lot of devastation. But as an adult, it's a moth. It's a sphinx moth and therefore it becomes a pollinator. And that's a lot of the issues with our insects as we need to figure out at what stage are they a problem and what stage are they good? And as we're um, figuring out what are, do we need to control and stuff, looking at what kind of damage and how much damage they're causing. So that's a quick snippet of the insect questions that I might get. You know, you can bring me insects in jars. You can send me photos via email or through text and I can try to identify them. And sometimes again, I can be pretty quick about it. Sometimes it might take me a little while because I don't always see every, you know, know every insect. There's lots of insects and bugs out there. Probably the most difficult one we've I've had to do is uh, grubs. So most people associate grubs with the Japanese beetle. There's actually many beetles that come in a grub form in their younger um, life cycle. And the way to identify them is there's very specific um, patterns of dots on their rear of the cat of the grub and so there's um, a chart that you can look at so you can figure out which beetle it actually belongs to so that's our quick snippet today join us next month for um 
another segment of what kinds of questions that I might answer as the agriculture and natural resource extension educator.